champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. All right, champs. What's going on here? What's all this frigging mess on my desk? Well, let's find out. Uh, gaming on an Ultrabook. What do you have to get? What kind of graphics card do you have to get? And how does it compare to a gaming laptop? I have a, indeed over here the SCAR 2060. You can get a 2070 version of that, but this is 2060. Review will come out for that soon. But what do you need to get that sort of performance from an Ultrabook? And this is a Yoga, the Nova Yoga. It just has a 15 watt quad core part, you know, no GPU. What sort of graphics card will you need? Well, indeed, I am reviewing, sort of mini reviewing this thing here. The beast, the god, the goat of RTX 2060s. Of course, it's the Strix, it's the best, it's the quietest, it's the coolest. It's you cannot friggin' even hear it. It's like barely working. The only thing you can hear is the power supply in this Akidio Node Pro. And look, it's cranking. It's got a bit of an overclock too. Can't hear it. Actually, I can hear this laptop <laughs> and it's doing nothing um, more than this graphics card. Amazing. 100% auto extreme. So it's made by a robot. No hands involved there. You know, the best contact, the best heat pipes, the, you know, the painted fans and it only comes on at 55 degrees. They're very quiet. You've got the RGB, you've got the headers for the Call in. Now, the Strix do cost the most, this RTX 2060. They cost the most. They cost more than anything else. Well, within reason, I think there are some stupid additions that may cost more. But, um, yeah, you get the best resale value too. They always sell out the fastest. They are the best. So, yeah, if you want the best RTX 2080, 2060, 2070, whatever, just get the Strix. Trust me. So what do you expect? What performance would we expect with an Ultrabook and RTX 2060? Will it be the laptop with an RTX 2070? Will it be the laptop with an RTX 2060? Well, we'll find out. I'll test that. I'll test the graphic score on that. Fire Strike. Test the Fire Strike here, the graphic score on this. And I already know the graphic score of an RTX 2070, the full version in one of the laptops I've just reviewed. Okay, so I know with the performance of that, also, this thing here, this has the 115 watt RTX 2060. So it'll be interesting to see whether this 2060 is actually faster than that. You would expect it would be. It's a desktop version, but the thing is, you've got the bottleneck there of the eGPU. So I'll just give you a quick little tour of what's going on to explain what's going on. All right, so I've got my Mac here. Usually I'd have an XPS 15 here as well. Um, I've sold that because, you know, I expected the new one to come out at CES. And yeah, so I'm using that as my daily driver for video editing at the moment. So over here, we have my main rig here, Radeon 7, 16 core Threadripper 1950. And it has the latest um, ROG Zenith Elf Extreme Alpha X, X399 motherboard. No reflections now, look at that Cable Management Pro. I actually had to, um, well, dodgy day from Pimp My PC. If you want any custom built PCs, had to modify this case because extended e ATX, yeah, it doesn't fit in these motherboards. And this is like, you know, a fractal's case, you know, it's all air cooled. I love this thing. And I may have actually given the RTX 2080 the, you know, the good old Kyber Pass um, and replaced it with an R7, Radeon 7. So, yeah, my iPhone audio just decided to fail. So, anyway. Continuing, why I'm telling you about this desktop is indeed this Ultrabook I'm using connected to an external GPU is actually going into this PC. It's going into the Elgato capture card and yeah, they make great capture cards. It's going straight from there. So it's going straight from my Ultrabook into the eGPU, straight into that capture card. They also make um, the Stream Deck too. Elgato makes some good products. I will review that Stream Deck very soon. And as far as this laptop's concerned, all this eGPU is concerned, it is connected to a monitor. It just thinks it's connected to a monitor. And I'm actually looking at it and recording the output of the eGPU 
GPU going straight into that capture card, the uh, 4K60. So this is one thing that's important when you're connecting the GPU to an Ultrabook. You must make sure that you're outputting from the external GPU into a monitor. You do not want to be outputting to the actual display of the laptop. Otherwise, you're just going to get more of a bottleneck and, it's, and the performance isn't going to be as good. Now, this thing here, this rigging Ultrabook, which I will review soon, actually purchased this and it has been the best laptop in regards to connected to any eGPU doesn't matter what graphics card it just works like I've tested so many laptops even this Mac this Lenovo I don't know why it even connects to the Dell Thunderbolt 3 dock and I've actually tried to connect that Dell Thunderbolt 3 dock to a Dell G7 and it didn't work but this it works no problems also, what's great about this Ultrabook is that it has two Thunderbolt 3s. Now, most laptops only have one Thunderbolt 3, and this is where this Akidia No Pro comes in. This Akidia No Pro, what's great about this eGPU is it has two Thunderbolt connections at the back. So I can connect to a Thunderbolt 3 dock and to this eGPU. But if you've only got one connection on your laptop, one Thunderbolt 3, that means what you have to do is connect the laptop to the eGPU and then connect the Thunderbolt 3 dock to the eGPU at the back because it has two Thunderbolt 3s on the back of this eGPU. This is unique. There's not many eGPUs that have those two Thunderbolt 3s. So if you only have one Thunderbolt 3 connection, this is a really good one to get. There are others that probably are better in some other ways. If you've only got one Thunderbolt 3, I would recommend this. That's why I want to see two Thunderbolt 3s on laptops now because I'm connected to an external dock as well which has ethernet a load more of usb ports and load more display options so the amount of displays i could actually display from this laptop from the eGPU and then the thunderbolt 3 dock and having ethernet on this laptop makes it better for gaming of course as well so anyway at the end of the day how is this rtx 2080 connected to this ultrabook through eGPU how does it compare to a, a laptop with an rtx 2060 rtx 2070 gtx 1060 and 1060 70 well you can see and what's surprising here is the desktop gtx 1060 is not that much faster than the rtx 2070 max p that was in the aurus i reviewed so it's not that much faster it's well, like it's 1000 still it's over a bit over 1000 but and if you have a look at the eGPU with the ultrabook yeah it gets sort of a low score sort of 15,000. it's like equivalent to what a gtx 1070 in a laptop from last generation, a Max-Q, ran the same sort of score. A little bit faster than the RTX 2060. That's what I'd expect. It is a desktop RTX 2060 anyway. You'd expect it to be faster than the ones in the laptops. Another interesting note here is the RTX 2060 is not faster than the GTX 1070 Max-Q. So I was hoping it would be, but it doesn't seem to be there. So anyway, I like... Thank you guys for watching. Hope you got something useful out of this and I'll catch you in the next one. I do have a SCAR to review very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I've got some more laptops coming in. I've got to catch up. I've got so much stuff. I'm going to have to just pump, 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 you know, just get them out as quick as I can. I'd like to catch you in the next one, guys. Hope you sub up, be a champ. That'll be great. Until next time, guys, tally ho.